Lost in the Sun by Lisa Graff. The accident that changed everything. I didn't do it on purpose, obviously. Killed Jared Richards, I mean. Miss Evelyn said I shouldn't say that, that I killed Jared, because it was an accident. What happened? And that wasn't the same thing at all. But accident or not, Jared Richards died and I was the reason. So what was the difference? Either way, I killed him. I hit the hockey puck at a bad angle. That was what happened. We were out playing on Cedar Lake last February, February 12th if you're counting, but who is? I'd heard that some of the guys needed another player to make it even, so I'd asked if I could join them. I wasn't the best skater, but everyone knew I was a pretty good athlete all around, so they said sure. Funny thing was, when it started, I thought it was going to be a really good day. Anyway, I hit the hockey puck at a bad angle, and Jared was standing where he shouldn't have been standing, and it got him, whack, right in the chest, which probably wouldn't have been so bad. I mean, I got him hard, so it would have hurt anybody, but it shouldn't have killed him. But it turned out Jared had a bad heart, a defect. That's what they said. No one knew about it before, only found out when it was too late. One bad shot, that's all it took. One bad shot and one bad heart. Prologue. When we were all real little kids, Mom used to take Aaron and Doug and me to Sal's Pizzeria for dinner almost every Tuesday, which is when they had their family night special. I think she liked it because she didn't have to worry about dinner for three growing boys for one night. But we liked it because there was a claw machine there, one of those giant contraptions with toys inside, all sorts, and a metal claw that you moved around with a joystick to try to grab at the toys. As soon as we got into the restaurant, Mom would hand us two dollars, which is how much it cost for three tries, and we'd huddle around the machine and plan our attack. We didn't want to waste the two dollars, so we usually took the whole amount of time until our pizza came up, trying to get one of those toys. Back then, I had my eye on a fuzzy blue monster, and Doug was desperate for one of those teddy bears. But after a while, we would have settled for anything. Aaron, as the oldest, was the designated joystick manipulator, and Doug, the youngest, would stand at the side and holler when he thought Aaron had the best angle on the chosen toy. I was in charge of strategy. Mom would sit at the table waiting for our pizza and read her book. I think she enjoyed the claw machine even more than we did. We spent six months trying for a toy in that claw machine. $48. Never got a single thing. No one else had gotten one either, we could tell. None of the stuffed animals ever shifted positions, but we were determined to be the first. Finally, the owner, Sal Jr., made a stop. He said he couldn't in good conscience let us waste any more money. Then he got a key from the back room and unlocked the side window panel of the claw machine and showed us. See how flimsy this thing is, he said, poking at the claw. Here, Trent, have a look. He boosted me up till I was practically inside the machine and let me fiddle with the claw, too. After that, it was Doug's turn, then Aaron's. Cheap piece of metal like that, Saul Jr. told us. It could never grab hold of one of these toys. Not if you had the best aim in the world. Not in a thousand years. And you know why? Why, I asked. I was mesmerized, I remember. I'll tell you, Trent, because look. That's when Sal Jr. grabbed hold of the teddy bear's arms, yanked it hard. It wouldn't budge. You could hear the bear stitching rip just a little. They're all packed in together super tight, I said when I figured it out. There's no room for any of them to go. Exactly, Sal Jr. told me. He locked the side window and panel back up. Consider that a lesson in economics, boys. 
We got two pizzas on the house that night with extra everything. Aaron was so mad about the claw machine he hardly ate. He said Sal Jr. had been stealing our money from the start, so it didn't matter if he gave us a pizza after. He was still a crook. Doug disagreed. He gobbled up his pizza so fast you'd never even have known he wanted a teddy bear. Me, though, I was more fascinated than anything. I felt like I'd learned a real lesson, a grown-up one, and it stuck with me. That's the day I figured out that no matter how hard you tug at something, no matter how bad you want it, sometimes it just can't be pride-free.